Hey guys and welcome to my channel. Today's video I'm talking about my recent horror reads. I read a few books last month and also one of them I read at the end of the month into the first week of September so I'm counting it towards August, okay? First book I read was Jar of Hearts which I did a whole reading vlog for that and I really enjoyed this one. This is my first Jennifer Hillier book and I think I'm a fan. She has some really dark stuff in here, really dark subject matter. So this story focuses on a young woman who is standing trial for the murder of her best friend when they were teenagers. The beginning of the book we follow her doing her prison sentence and then we follow her once she gets out and some crimes are happening that are similar to the crimes that happened when she was a kid. So when she was a kid she was dating this really abusive guy and he's the one who murdered her best friend and someone has been committing similar crimes and they think it's him and he's trying to reach out to her. What I liked about this story is it had flashbacks to her time as a teenager so we get to see her friendship with the girl who died and we get to see her relationship with her boyfriend and see how abusive it was. It's just really sad. It's really sad to see that she had no confidence as a teenager and she just felt like that was the love she thought she deserved. There's a lot of stuff in here that's really dark and disturbing. There's SA, there's murder, there's a lot of murder and there's stuff involving children so it's not an easy read but I liked that it was twisty. It had some interesting revelations Sometimes it felt over the top, but it worked for me. It felt a little cliche and, and cheesy at times, but I was so enamored by the characters and just how quick it is. It gets you into the story immediately, and I just really connected with it. I would compare her to Karen Slaughter, although I've only read one Karen Slaughter book, which is Pretty Girls. I think if you like your thrillers dark and disturbing a little over the top, you might enjoy this one. I definitely want to check out more from her. Then I picked up Brother by Anya Alborn. I think that's how you say it. This is my first book. I've read by her and I loved it. It's very much Texas Chainsaw Massacre meets Wrong Turn. So this story centers on a young boy who is living with this really abusive cannibalistic family in the woods. They're really messed up and they are cut off the grid from the rest of the world and they survive by kidnapping girls and murdering them and eating them. You know, family things, lovely family things. And they bond by chasing these girls down in their backwoods area and then bond over eating her at dinner. Learn more about the main character who's this young boy and you discover things about him and how he's kind of different from his family. It's a really interesting coming of age story that is super dark. It has some super dark revelations and I don't want to give too much away but this one I found to be very emotional and sad and it went places I wasn't expecting. I was expecting it to be full-blown blood and guts in your face disgusting goriness but it wasn't that like yes they do have some really disturbing moments where you're seeing these women get killed but it's mostly a really sad story about this young boy and how he fits in with this family and how lonely he is and how just sad and depressing their lives are i did not expect to get as emotional as I did and the ending is a gut punch. Then I picked up Into the Sublime which immediately the cover caught me because it looks like The Descent and that's how I would describe it. It's basically a YA version of The Descent. It's about this group of girls that are in this club for thrill seekers and they learn about this secret cave underground that is supposed to have like these mythical abilities to it. So like if you go to this cave you find it and you make a wish it can make your wish come true. Something like that. So it's all these these this group of like four girls I think and they don't really know each other. They're pretty much strangers but the one thing they have in common is this club. So they set out together. Each of them has their own reasons for wanting to find this cave and once they get underground things start going wrong. I love the setup. I love the underground subterranean element to it. It definitely gave me the Descent vibes. However, it didn't go as horror as I wanted it to. It was definitely more of a thriller. Once the girls got underground it started to get a little bit repetitive for me halfway through and I didn't really even understand what happened in the end. I was like, what? I don't know what's happening, but I'm done with this book. I really, like, I ate this book up the first hundred or so pages and it just was giving me everything I need where you're fine figuring out who these girls are, you're following them as they're making this trek through the woods and into this cave and I love that 
claustrophobic feeling you get and it's just even creepier because these girls don't know each other so it's like there's an awkwardness between them and there's also this legend that has to do with the cave that involves this witch that I thought was a really creepy story and I wanted the creepiness to become more a part of the story but it didn't go to the level that I expected it to be. The characters became very annoying and I don't know, I just didn't love it as much as I wanted to. I thought it was okay. I think the first half of the book is excellent. I love the, the setting and I think it's a good read if you're looking for a quick, fast, subterranean horror and you're a fan of this ascent and like girls on a journey type deal uh, with lots of secrets. But yeah, I couldn't tell you what happened in the end. I was just confused. I still don't know. So if you've read this, can you please explain the ending to me? Then I picked up Clown in a Cornfield 2, Friendo Liz. Love this cover so much. This is a sequel to Clown in a Cornfield, which was about a group of kids, teens in this small town of Kettle Springs that are basically attacked by clowns on Halloween. That's all I'm gonna say because there's a twist to that one. So this book follows the aftermath of the events of the first book. So we're following the characters who survived the first book and seeing how they're dealing with it, they're dealing with the trauma, PTSD, and the infamy that comes with being in a huge tragedy like that. So they're kind of famous and there's a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding what happened to them and there's a lot of people with opinions and there's a lot of interesting commentary on the evils of the internet and how Miss information can spread and a situation can really implode. People with really strong beliefs can get certain people behind them and just build this like cult-like following where people agree with every little thing they say. I thought there was a lot of parallels to certain real life events we've watched played out. Yeah, it was just scary because I could see something like this playing out because we've seen it since 2020. A lot of stuff is played out on the internet and on TV with this mob mentality and how people get a certain thing in their mind and when one when one person finds somebody else to agree with them that group can just build and build and their ideas may be insane but as long as you get somebody to believe you, people will follow you. So it's just scary. I don't know if I'm making sense, but I really liked that aspect of it. I thought it was a clever take on the story. The violence in this book is so dark. It's still, it shocks me of what Adam Caesar was able to get away with for YA. Like the violence really made my jaw drop in took my breath away at some points. The stuff that happens, these kills are just so brutal and you just feel them and you're like, how is this, how is this for teens? Yeah, the kills are great. The characters are interesting and I really like where the story ends and I feel like it kind of sets it up for a third book and I really hope they that we do get a third book. I really enjoy this book. I think that it has feels of an old school 90s slasher. It very much felt like Scream 2 to me. It's just a fun book with some interesting themes and ideas and I really recommend it. I'm not a huge slasher fan, but these ones really pulled me in immediately. And then lastly, I finished off my reading month with What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. So apparently this is a retelling of The Fall of House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe, or whatever that story is, which interestingly enough is being adapted into a Netflix series from Mike Flanagan, which I'm excited about. I've never read that story, so I went into this knowing absolutely nothing. The story centers on a person. I think they're non-binary. So this person is called to the House of Usher because Madeline Usher, the lady of the house, is dying. When they get to the house, they realize that it's basically falling apart. It's dark, decrepit, overrun, and there's something strange going on with the ushers and the area surrounding them. I love the gothic setting. It's definitely a slow burn and took a bit to get where it was going, and it felt a little long even though it's like a little over 150 pages, but I do I did enjoy it and I think the payoff is worth it. It's surprisingly funny. 
was not expecting to laugh at certain points like the characters are really funny and just very engaging i really connected with them and it was very easy to read the main character is really interesting i really liked following them and just their reactions to certain things that are going on were just so funny to me because they felt real like how i would react in that situation and there's one particular scene where they dissect an animal a hare which is on the cover and that scene was so well done. It was both horrifying and hilarious to me because these horrifying things are happening while they're dissecting this creature and discovering things. But the way that everybody's reacting is just so funny. I, it's just, it was funny to read. And that's one of the things I love about it is it's creepy and funny. It's like a perfect balance of horror and humor. I really like this author. This is the first thing I've ever read by them, so I definitely want to check out more. This is very quick. If you love gothic, slow burn horror, more of a character study, I think you'll really like this. It's not filled with tons of body horror and gross stuff. Not too heavy on the horror stuff, but it's very atmosphere. It's thick with atmosphere and dread because you know when this person gets to the usher's house that something horrible is going on. You're just waiting for them to find out. So there you have it. Those are the books I've read recently. Let me know what books you've read recently. If you've checked any of these out, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will catch you next time. Bye.